everybody and welcome to the channel. Um, I just wanted to talk about strike drones a little bit while we're all waiting for the patch to drop here. Right now we obviously have the first three in the game and, uh, and if it goes well, and I, I think they will go well, I can see Gaijin introducing new drones almost every patch. Now if you're not familiar with um, drones or unmanned combat aerial vehicles, um, they can fit many roles from battlefield surveillance to combat search and rescue and strike um, reconnaissance missions, that kind of stuff. They can range from the very simple to the quite, you know, very sophisticated, um, you know, with stealth features, advanced targeting sensor, sensors, um, synthetic aperture radar, you know, that kind of stuff. They're also capable of precision guided weapons employment um, with everything from GPS guided and laser guided bombs to anti-tank guided missiles. I want to go through uh, just a few that I think could be popping up in the coming months. So it's certainly not going to hit them all, just a couple of them. All right, so just a quick rundown on what's already coming. And I'm going to go into more detail on these later. But what's already coming is the MQ-1 Predator for the U.S. and maybe some other nations. The Wing Long 1, which is the Chinese drone, and the Orion, which is the Russian drone. So all of these drones are in the MAL category or the multi-mission medium altitude long endurance category. I gotta highlight the speed and the service ceiling, the engine and the sensors and the weapons choices for all of these as I go through. But the first one up of course is the MQ-1 Predator. Everybody's seen this drone. I mean, it's it's been in and out of combat probably for the last 10 years or so. Um, you know, 217 kilometers per hour, so it's pretty slow. We know that um, it uses a piston, um, Rotax 914 um, propeller driven engine. Sensor suite is pretty good. You know, it's got ESM, so electronic support measures, uh, multi spectral targeting system, and a synthetic aperture radar. Really depends on the payloads. For weapons, though, which is probably what we're all caring about, is it can carry two Hellfires, which we've seen, uh, or four Stingers, or these things called the AGM 176 Griffin. It can carry six of those. And really what those are are really small air to surface missiles. Maybe we'll see those uh, come along in the game. That'd be pretty nice. All right, for China, we're looking at the Chengdu Winglong 1, which is very similar to the MQ-1 Predator in capability. Speed is 280 kilometers per hour, so a little bit faster. Service ceiling about 16,000 feet, but that's open source, might not be correct. Uh, single engine as well, the Rotax 914 um, piston engine. Sensor suite, uh, not much information on that. Has two weapons hardpoints, carries the AKD-10 ATGM. Has uh, the choice to carry some rockets, some dumb bombs, and some guided bombs. So pretty good capability there. All right, next up is the Kronstadt Orion for Russia. Similar capability to the previous drones, although um, we couldn't find as much information on this one. But the speed for this is about 200 kilometers per hour. Service ceiling, 26,000 feet. Um, as far as armaments, it looked like this one had two weapons hardpoints and can carry the Vicar anti-tank guided missile. Subsequent versions of the Ryans have uh, more hardpoints though. Alright, so now that we got the review out of the way, for the new drones that I think will be coming in, uh, trickling into the game, um, is the MQ-9 Reaper, which is a follow-on from the MQ-1 Predator. This drone is used by the U.S. Air Force, it's used by... Um, the Royal Air Force, the Italian Air Force, France, Germany, Japan, Spain. So lots of, uh, you know, applicability across the nations in the game. So getting into um, what's the meat of this one here? You know, it's bigger, much faster. So the speed of this one is 482 kilometers per hour, about a 50,000 uh, foot service ceiling. Uh, the engine is a turboprop Honeywell TPE-331, um, 900 horsepower on that one. Sensors, we're looking at multi-spectral targeting system and a uh, APY-8 Lynx-2 radar. Hard points though, lots more hard points, seven. Um, this can carry up to four uh, Hellfire missiles. It can carry um, JDAMs. It can carry paveways. It can carry the small diameter um, bombs. And interesting enough, it test fired the Brimstone missile, which is the, uh, a British missile, which is pretty highly capable. It can also carry stingers and it can also carry the AM9X Sidewinder. So this thing has a uh, room to grow in the game for sure. Next one up here is the MQ-20 Avenger, which is pretty interesting looking. It's still in development though, but it's uh, very fast. So we're looking at 740 kilometers per hour, 
50,000 foot um, service ceiling. Uses a Pratt & Whitney turbofan engine. Same thing with the sensors as um, kind, of, kind of the MQ-9. It has a synthetic aperture radar, has an ASA wide surveillance sensor, and multi-spectral imaging sensors. It has six hard points, can carry the Hellfire missile, GBU-39 small diameter bomb, uh, GBU-12s and 16s, GBU-31s, 32s, and 38s. So lots of capability on this one. All right, next up is the MQ-1C Gray Eagle. There's also the improved Gray Eagle. This is a U.S. Army developed drone, similar capability to the MQ-9 Predator. Speed is about 309 kilometers per hour. Service ceiling about 50,000 feet as well. Has four hard points, you know, can carry four Hellfires or eight um, Stinger missiles or four GBU-44 Viper strike bombs. It has a ZPY-1 Starlight radar and it also has a multi-spectral targeting system under the nose. So the interesting thing about the Gray Eagle though, is if we ever get the AH-64E Guardian Apache, is that the Guardian Apache can use the Gray Eagle to extend its targeting range. So it can actually um, control the drone. The pilots of the Apache can control the Gray Eagle. And what they're able to do is uh, designate targets while the Apache is standing way off. So a little bit overpowered, I know, but, um, you know, Gaijin seems to be going there. You know, they continuously are driving this high technology, high lethality kind of a uh, weaponry into the game. And the last U.S. drone I think I'll talk about here is the X-47B demonstrator that you saw in the intro. Now that's um, a naval drone. You know, it's still in development hell right now. There's not a whole lot of information out on what it can really you know do and what its capabilities is going to be. I just know that it has two weapons bays. Um, it can carry a substantial payload there, up to 4,500 pounds worth of stuff. You know, it's going to have sensors. Um, its speed and ceiling, you know, it's high subsonic, uh, capable of going up to 42,000 feet. All right, jumping over to Russia real quick is the Sukhoi S-70 Okaktik B. So this uh, drone is, you know, it's supposed to be, um, I think the Russians are calling it like a fifth or sixth generation drone. It's supposed to be stealthy, uses the engine or A engine from the SU-70. Uh, 57 felon um, not much information out on this kind of the same thing with the x47b still in development hell but you know at some point in time it could it could pop out or pop into the game all right so going back over to china you know we talked about the wing long one already but there is the Qingdu wing long two which same capabilities as the uh the earlier version but the uh the two has six hard points speed bumps up to 300 kilometers uh, per hour there's also the Chengdu Wing Long 10 or Cloud Shadow, that's what it's called. Not much is known about this drone. It's kind of stealthy. You can carry the AKD-10 and some guided bombs. Uh, it is much faster, up to 620 kilometers per hour, up to 49,000 feet with its uh, service ceiling. But it can carry the AKD-10 Blue Arrow ATGM, uh, some cruise missiles, some bombs, guided bombs. So really good kit for this drone. Another Chinese drone is the Hongdu GJ-11 Sharp Sword. So this is a uh, stealthy uh, drone designed by Xingyang Aircraft Institute. Uh, not much known about this one either. It has two internal weapon bays and powered by a single engine. Um, looks to be, looks pretty cool. Uh, another flying wing type of design. So uh, at some point, maybe this will pop in as well. All right, so next Chinese drone is a Tingden TB-001. Not much is known about this one either. It's a twin tail design with two engines, which is pretty unique. Four hard points, can carry some laser guided bombs and FT-7 and 9 glide bombs and cruise missiles as well. So uh, that's it for China. All right, so the next one up is the Turkish Barakhtar TB-2. Hopefully Gaijin gets this into the game. It's a you know pretty pretty famous drone if you've been watching the news lately. This speed though, 120 kilometers per hour, very slow, 25,000 foot service ceiling, um, Rotax 912 power plant, very good sensor package, you know, has, you know, radar, um, multi-spectral targeting, um, you know, all of the good stuff here. Weapons, pretty good and unique weapons. Um, four hard points for provisions to carry the MAM-C, the MAM-L, and they're basically laser-guided smart bombs. Can also carry the L 
Untas long range anti tank missile. Um, it can also carry some 70 millimeter rockets. And it can also carry some um, laser guided rockets. And that is looking pretty nice right there. Really good weapon suite. All right, just a few notable mentions here. The MQ-9B Sky Guardian, you know, the Royal Air Force version of the MQ-9B. Only minor differences there with the sensors. There's also the Dassault Neuron, which is a uh, French drone. Uh, that one's still kind of in development, been there for a while. Speed's looking pretty good though, 980 kilometers per hour. Um, really nice. Armaments, uh, two guided bombs. And then there's the Eads Barracuda which is a very nice looking drone. That one's still kind of in development as well. Of note here, the Barracuda and the Neuron are in competition with each other. You know, Germany and Spain are backing the Barracuda while the Neuron is, of course, the French, um, but it's the Italians, the Swedish government, the Swiss government, Greece and Spain, all funding the Neuron. The key point to highlight with most of these drones that I listed is that a lot of them are a lot faster. You know, exception is the Baraktar TB2. Um, but for the most part, they also have better weapons, which is going to allow uh, greater standoff ranges, which again will enhance your survivability. Some of them even have stealth characteristics, which again will enhance your survivability. So let me know what you guys think. Is Gaijin going down the right road uh, with drones at all? Um, I think at some point, I think they're going to continue with this. I think at some point we'll see some of these, if not all of these, come into the game that I listed and probably a lot more that I didn't even talk about. But uh, as always, thanks for checking out the video. Um, like, comment. Um, if you've not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.